Hello everyone, it's another edition of Ask Guillem. Uh, let's start first with uh, something a Twitter put out there just saying Ask Guillem is back this week and uh, send you questions. And I said, um, basically there are a lot of stories of Pogba and Real Madrid and I'll deal with those and we'll talk about that of course. And Barcelona have agreed a deal with a player and we'll talk about that as well. <laughs> People read things very quickly and they thought that the Barcelona player was Pogba. Uh, never said that. But that has brought all the uh, Manchester United trolls. Hello, I really miss you. Please don't leave me alone ever. And I hope you uh, keep in uh, healthy and safe. Anyway, uh, with that little start, I know my tweets are not the most important in the world. Um, but if you're going to have a go at it, read it properly. And then you can see if uh, uh, you actually... Um, have understood what I said. Anyway, um, on, on, on trolling, just quickly, I don't mind. Bring it on. The first uh, tweet comes from Paulo Ferreira. He says, lots of speculations regarding players for the new Newcastle United. Do you really think that the prospective owners are calling agents without any, without any manager being already lined up or actually agreed to join the club? Thanks. It tends to happen on, on transitions that this is an important part of it as well, not to just come in and destroy everything that's been put in place. And the other thing about those big names is natural to the effects of... Um, uh, the type of journalists that we're talking about, uh, where they put names out there and relate them to um, either big clubs or clubs where, that are getting new money, uh, it's it's normal in a way that those kind of stories come out because some of it is click, uh, uh, click by it, of course. Uh, some of it is just lazy response to, as I said, money coming in. But if you dig a little bit, what you will realize is that, of course, um, they're going to work with financial fair play, the new people that are coming in. And that means that they can only have 30 million euros losses over three years. That's if they, they want to get into, into Europe, into the Champions League. And that is the UEFA limit. There is a bigger limit in the Premier League anyway, but they will have to readjust that if they go into Europe. They're not going to just go and break the bank and break the rules uh, and then fingers crossed that uh, they can go through it. That's not the plan. So forget about a marquee signing for, for Newcastle, like big, big signing. It's going to be a process and it always takes uh, time. Plus, remember the context of the situation right now in terms of uh, how coronavirus is going to affect the, uh, the money of clubs that right now don't even know what they've got available because it's not the same playing than not playing. And I know everybody's trying to put it all together. So there are games soon in the end of May, beginning of June uh, or middle of June have it all finished by the end of July. That's, of course, the plan. But uh, there's been there's going to be losses because of uh, lack of uh, tickets being sold uh, and uh, and the, the, the match day money that comes in. So, uh, as I said before, in the market, most clubs are going for swaps or loans, looking for players on a free. And also that has got its own implications, of course, because... Um, they won't be able to leave the clubs on the 30th of June, will they? Uh, it must be an agreement, uh, even though it won't probably be a collective one, that those contracts uh, run out at the end of the season, whenever that is. That has got a lot of um, legal implications that we're not going to get into it right now, but it makes the players that are uh, free at the end of the season, makes their life complicated because they would like to have their future sorted now. And, uh, and obviously they can negotiate with other clubs, but there are a lot of players, and there's 500 players that are whose contract finished at the end of the season. Uh, some of them is all up in the air. And as I said, because clubs don't know exactly how much money they can work with, uh, even though there's an attractive proposition to attract those players, there is uh, not enough movement in the market for all of them to be placed in clubs. Mm -hmm. So it's a difficult situation for them. I do believe, going back to the uh, to the issue, I believe that Newcastle are actually going to look uh, at the market very carefully before taking big decisions. But it's also true that uh, for clubs like, I don't know, Manchester City, Manchester United, Chelsea, according to an agent, one of the top agents in the world, has said those are the three clubs that have got money, they will be able to get some bargains here and there. Uh, and we will discuss some of some of that uh, that has been linked 
uh, in, the, in the papers and that you mentioned as well, and then uh, see the likelihood of, of it. It is according to what I've been, information I've been given. So um, Bojek Basiak is saying, tell me a player on the contract agrees a contract with another team. When does that happen? He says, well, I know you can you can do that uh, unless it's half a year left in your contract. He's talking about Pogba. So stop spreading rumours or you want to tell us that Manchester United allowed this. Because I didn't say that uh, Pogba was going to Barcelona or anything like that. In fact, there is no <laughs> relation between Pogba and Barcelona. The thing I was going to refer to is Pogba and Real Madrid. There are a lot of stories about Pogba and Real Madrid. That's all I said. Uh, and I uh, insisted on something I said I think it was last week, that Manchester United are optimistic that he can renew his contract and that um, there won't be enough interest uh, and enough money from PSG, from Juventus, from uh, Real Madrid to get to the 115 million euros that uh, those three clubs have been told is the price of Pogba. I don't think they're going to invest that kind of money. Um, so the most, the most likely situation is that, as I say, uh, from the point of view of uh, Manchester United, they are optimistic that they can even renew the contract with Pogba. So that's the latest I heard on his future. Anything else? Pete, uh, Gallowgate Pete says, rather than seeing us linked with all these high-profile players, I'd rather see, he's talking about Newcastle, I'd rather see who we will appoint as our version of Soriano Bagiristain, any people uh, who you compare them to. That's a very good point, and that is the, the, the way that the new owners, if they are allowed to, um, to take over Newcastle, uh, and I'm very strong in the thinking that um, you should be very careful who you open the doors to, uh, and I will oppose to the move of Newcastle being bought by, um, but yes, by a state that has got so many questions to answer in, in, in regards of civil rights. Um, that is my position, and that is what I, would, uh, I wouldn't like, even my own club, Espanol, um, for that to happen. And Espanol is run by a Chinese businessman. Uh, so he uses his money that he's earned in his companies to finance Espanol, has done so far. Now he's not bringing so much money uh, because his own companies uh, have been... Uh, have been hit by recent crisis. It's not the state of China that allows that. In any case, uh, I understand the excitement of Newcastle fans. I will also um, ask them to think, would you just, uh, just so you get a more competitive team, would you allow anybody, anybody, not saying the ones that are, have put the offer for Newcastle, but would you allow anybody in the world no matter what record their personal record is, to run Newcastle? Would you really? Uh, I disagree with that. With that, but in any case, yes, uh, Monchi would be uh, one obvious choice, or anybody who's been under the the belt of uh, of, of of Monchi, or anybody who's worked under his wings, uh, and um, and basically, Monchi is now at Sevilla, left Roma. He's very, very settled in Sevilla. He wouldn't leave. But his dream has been at some point to actually come to the Premier League. Monchi, of course, who's got such a, such a brilliant record at Sevilla. Uh, I think he's earned about it's a 350 million euros for Sevilla in that period in between, between sales and, and, and buys. Uh, brought the likes of Daniel Bez, Rakitic, so many. Um, there are, of course, others, uh, uh, say, in the Spanish um, uh, in the Spanish with a job in, in, the Span in Spanish football that will uh, be happy to do that kind of role. But the Begiristain Soriano situation was a little bit different, really, because uh, it was a plan that had Pep Guardiola at the end of it. And of course, uh, they went for two directors that had a, a, a bigger vision of, of the market and a successful past as well. Difficult to find those, but, uh, but uh, you, I think Monchi could be one if you ever are able to convince him. Anything on Arthur uh, and Todibo? Uh, what is Barcelona's stance on them? Todibo, they want to sell him. And which signings are Barcelona looking for? Well, in terms of Arthur, uh, let me tell you that it's not true that Spurs want him. It's not true. It's been put out there. Uh, Inter, different situation. Inter would like uh, him to be um, as part of a deal for Lautaro Martinez. That's the player that Barcelona has got an agreement with. 
is an agreement between Barcelona and the player, the player and Barcelona. That's all. Not Inter and Barcelona. And because of it, it needs to be agreed. Inter is open to negotiate. Uh, Lautaro Martinez, obviously happy to go to Barcelona. Barcelona happy to have him. But they, can, they cannot afford him in terms of only paying for cash. So they want to offer players. How about Todibo? How about Umtiti? How about Rakitic? Uh, and Inter said, how about Arthur? The idea is not to sell Arthur. And Arthur doesn't want to leave Barcelona. Uh, but everybody at Barcelona is for sale. So uh, this week, the message from Barcelona is Arthur is not for sale. Arthur is saying, I don't want to leave. And of course, Kike said, didn't want him to stay. But uh, as I'm saying, because the market is so complex, we will have to see what eventually happens with it. But that's the stand at the moment. Uh, talking about Spurs, Omdembele has been offered to Barcelona. They said not to him. Uh, and But... Uh, Arthur was not wanted by Spurs. Uh, what Spurs won is a right back, and they asked for Semedo. Uh, again, somebody that is for sale at Barcelona, but no offer has been uh, received. They would like to sell them TT and Rakitic uh, and raise money that way, perhaps for Lautaro Martinez. Uh, they will, now that they have the agreement with the player, they will make um, a really, uh, they will try to get money from somewhere or make those swaps that I was telling you about earlier. Uh, that means, of course, that Neymar, it's an impossibility. It's just simply not going to happen. And I know that he's been related to Real Madrid uh, by former agent that's close to, has been close to Real Madrid, Juan Ribeiro, who has said that uh, Florentino still dreams, Florentino Perez, the chairman of Real Madrid, still dreams of taking Neymar to, uh, to Barcelona, uh, sorry, to Real Madrid. But... Again, uh, Real Madrid are not planning to sign anybody at this stage. They want to think about the uh, loan deals that I've got out there, like Hakimi, Odegaard, see if they bring them into the into the club. But first, they want to see as well if they want to can I get can I get rid of the likes of Modric, Lucas Vazquez, James, Bale. So a lot of decisions are very early to be talking about, of course, because we are in that point where everybody still. Um, yes, putting players for sale, but not receiving anything. No offers, uh, nobody rushing to buy anything. So we'll, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Uh, I'll talk about Coutinho as well very soon, uh, and related to Chelsea. Gregory Bodbot says, uh, what do you think will happen with Mbappé? Will, will he stay? Will he go to Madrid? Rumor about Liverpool is true. Liverpool, uh, as always with the big, club, with the big players, they want to have information. Uh, my understanding is that he said uh, in his mind to go to Real Madrid. He wants to go to Real Madrid. He's told that in the past and it will happen, but not this summer. We will have to see if Real Madrid will wait, depending how the financial situation of the club goes, if they will go for uh, trying to buy him in next summer or wait until the end of his contract. In any case, nothing will happen to Mbappé this summer. That's what I've been told by everybody I've asked. Uh, Besco again is saying uh, the obvious question, who is that player? He's talking about that tweet uh, I mentioned um, in which I said that, you know, people are talking about Pogba and Real Madrid, and I'll tell you what I know, which I have done. And a player has agreed to join Barcelona, which is Lautaro Martinez, of course. Now the deal has to be agreed with, um, with, uh, with Inter. Sean Perellan is asking in Spanish uh, any possibility that Coutinho finishes in an English club. The story of Coutinho is quite simple. Bayern Munich are not going to renew the contract that they've got. Uh, they don't want to keep him any longer on loan. And the link has been with Chelsea. Does Lampard like Coutinho? Of course he does. Does he need Coutinho? He doesn't need Coutinho. So Chelsea are not going to go for Coutinho. They need a striker. Um, that's their priority. Uh, as I said, only the, both Manchester United um, or Chelsea will be able according to the top agent I've asked, to, be, to pay for uh, some kind of deal for Coutinho, in which Barcelona will lose money for certain. Nobody's going to be able to pay 100 million for anybody, really. Um, but neither Manchester City or United need Coutinho right now. And also, he's earning 14.14 million euros net. That's his salary a year, wages. So he's going to have to reduce his wages big time. Otherwise, he stays at Barcelona, which Kike de Setien has said, why not? That's a really good possibility, and he will work with him. 
and it may be uh, if Lautaro comes with um, maybe with the possibility Griezmann for sale, for sure. Apart from Messi and Ter Stegen, everybody and Luis Suarez perhaps, uh, everybody else is for sale. Uh, another thing is if anybody buys them, uh, which of course with high wages, I see that very unlikely. Gus Priver says Neymar to Barcelona and Real Madrid. I already discussed uh, that one. I don't think it's going to happen, even though Neymar will want it to happen. Uh, I don't think this is the summer for it. Uh, John Wright, any truth at all? Coutinho to Leicester. Now, the only club in the Premier League that's shown interest in Coutinho has been Leicester. Leicester City, of course, with Brenda Rogers, who brought Coutinho to, uh, to Liverpool and had a very good relationship with him. Uh, the problem is, at the moment, that uh, Coutinho and his, uh, and his representatives think that he should go for, uh, for a bigger club. Put as that uh, to me. That's what I've been told. And, uh, and if that, that's the case, then missing on Leicester will be a, a big opportunity, I feel. And that may come back later in the market when nobody else puts the offer that uh, Coutinho is expecting. So do not discount that to happen because it's the only club that has shown a real interest for Coutinho right now. And Phil Legend is saying, uh, Dara McDonough, uh, update on Berna, Team Berna, please. The latest update is that uh, Bayern Munich uh, have said publicly that they have, uh, they're close to agreeing um, a deal with, uh, with a forward, uh, with, a, with an offensive player. It could be Werner, it could be Havertz, or it could be um, Sané, one of the three. That's what we've been told. So Werner is, uh, is one of the possibilities. What I was told before the pandemic was that Liverpool were obviously monitoring the likes of Timo Werner and uh, he would adapt to Liverpool very well, but he wasn't somebody that they had made an offer for. That's where I left it. It was just really uh, around uh, March, the beginning of March, when, when I heard of that, uh, end of February, something like that. And um, so really at the beginning of the pandemic. And there was no offer for Timo Werner. I just don't see how they, this can happen. Uh, under the circumstances that we're living at the moment. Any Chelsea news from Richie Parral? Basically, the thing I want to say is what I've said already, that they're looking for a striker, that they need to sort out, of course, the, 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 the cut in the wages of the players, which hasn't been sorted out yet. And, uh, and you know, the manager in the middle of... And all the managers are the same. Frank Lampard in the middle of trying to convince the players to cut wages and... Uh, understanding the situation of the club uh, and being close to them, of course, but at the same time seeing the bigger picture that is painted um, to him by the club in which they will uh, need those wages to be cut, but also the things to happen for them to have certain strength in the market. So he's going to have to put the priorities clear and the priority is to get a striker first and foremost. Uh, there's another uh, player that, if available, uh, if not wanted by others, if he doesn't go anywhere else, Chelsea will like, and he's a lava. Uh, he's been uh, approached by other clubs, yes, uh, but Chelsea will be interested uh, in, in a lava, and, uh, and I think that his versatility will really work in favour of Frank Lampard. He can play, as you know, in the middle, uh, in the midfield, in, 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 the, uh, in the full-back position as well. Of course, that's where he's known, very well known as... But he's uh, Pep Guardiola made him much more than just a fullback, and uh, and it will be interesting to see him in the in the Premier League. That's certainly one to keep an eye on. So um, that's about it. That's as Guillem for this week. Um, I'll try to put tweets a little bit clear so people don't get confused. But in any way, there'll be another Ask Guillem next week. See you then. <laughs>